Glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this time of devotion and prayer. Lord, as always, we come humbly before you to receive from you. Lord, the most important thing that we can probably ever ask is, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us how to pray. Lord, thank you that you that your Holy Spirit lives in us and teaches us how to pray when we don't know how. <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen. Jacob, James chapter 5, verse 17 reads, Elijah was a man subject to natural passions as we are. So Elijah, a man who had an incredible anointing of God, who called down judgment upon the prophets of Baal, how glorious of a sight would that have been? But yet he was a man subject to natural passions as we are. And you may say, yeah, well, Elijah, being the man of faith, and the man of prayer that he was, he didn't, he didn't have all of the, the troubles and the, the, the pursuant life uh, uh, expectancies as as we do. Where uh, he doesn't, he didn't have to work a, a nine to five job. He didn't have to change baby diapers. He didn't have to get up every three hours to feed an infant. Well, he might not have had to get up every three hours to feed an infant. But I'm sure he spent laborious hours in prayer, sleepless, tired, cold, hungry. He was a man of natural passions as we are. He was well acquainted with sleeplessness, frustration, anger, pain, joy. But yet, when we read, he says, and he prayed earnestly. Some of the old translations would say, and he prayed in his praying. And I asked myself, what does it mean to pray in his praying? Well, it's a Hebraism. It means to pray earnestly. In Hebrew, in, in Hebrew they would often uh, t to express importance or uh, uh, veracity, they would repeat a verb twice or three times or, or what have you and it's the same here so he's praying earnestly he prayed earnestly in spite of all of his passions that were at war against him he prayed earnestly he prayed and what does it say that he prayed for he prayed that it would not rain and for how long three years and six months that is a long time in the prayer closet to be praying about one thing and you would think, wow, Elijah was a man who had prayer mastered. He had it figured out. He had dialed in. No, Elijah did not master prayer. And this is important for us to realize. We don't master prayer. Prayer masters us. And we don't change prayer. Prayer changes us. And why is this? And I, I think that Samuel Chadwick says it well when he says in his book pathway to prayer he says prayer changes things prayer makes all things possible for it links this is key it links the praying soul to the omnipotence of god elijah might not have had prayer mastered But he knew who his God was. He knew that if he prayed and sought God earnestly, that he was a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so the question this morning is, why, I should say, Lord, The question is, are we so set 
to pray and to seek God in spite of our natural passions. That we would even dare to seek God when we are cold, tired, hungry. Would we so dare as to take God at his word when he says, if you humble yourself, if you diligently seek me, I will be found by you, says the Lord. Are we going to let our natural passions as they are keep us from praying, from seeking God? It's not that we worship the altar of prayer. Rather, we worship at the altar of prayer. Brothers, sisters, regardless of what natural passions are at work in you now, pray. Pray earnestly. Pray fervently. Elijah was a man of many burdens. And so, let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we have this glorious and most joyful and fulfilling call to prayer. Lord, I pray that in spite of all of our passions that war against us, that seek to keep us from, from communing with you, from praying diligently, earnestly, that your grace, which is more than sufficient to sustain us and to empower us, that we would have victory over these passions, that we have the victory over these passions, Lord, and that they will not keep us from praying, that they will not keep us from seeking. But Lord, I thank you for the many things that so easily distract us. Yes, thank him for the distraction. Pray through it. Pray through the distraction. Samuel Chadwick, he says in his book, Pathway to Prayer, he says that there are many problems about prayer. Let me quote it in exactitude here. Sorry, didn't plan on reading this a little bit. He says, There are many problems about prayer, but they lie outside the fact and experience of prayer. And apart from praying, there is no solution to them. Prayer is a fact of experience, and through all the ages, the testimony of those who prayed has been that God hears and answers the prayers of his children. Beloved, the Father hears and answers the prayers of his children. Don't let the passions, the natural passions within, keep you out of the prayer closet today. In Jesus' name, amen.